Welcome everyone. My name is Karen Zagans and I'm the director and flute faculty of Z-Tunes Music. I'm excited to welcome flutist Todd Skitch of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra as our clinician today. Canadian-born flutist Mr. Skitch joined the ASO in September 2013. He is also a member of the Atlanta Chamber Players and is the artist in residence at Kennesaw State University. For today's clinic, we're going to stay on mute while our clinician works through the audition excerpts. I suggest you have your copy of the excerpts and a pencil ready to make notes. You can type in any questions you'd like to ask in the chat box, and then we'll ask those questions at the end of each etude. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Mr. Skitch. Great, thanks, Karen. Welcome. Hi, everybody. All right, so GMEA, uh, this is the middle school. Um, two etudes, one lyrical, one technical. Um, for this first etude, <clears throat> obviously the first most important thing to do is to recognize what key it's in. I hope you're all familiar with your minors. And this is in the key of D minor, not F major. So you might, might want to make sure you actually can play D minor scale, maybe even all three ways, natural, and harmonic, and then uh, melodic. Just going fast to save time. This is, of course, uh, in a minor key, so it might sound a little sad or melancholy to you. Uh, it's a very smooth um, etude. Almost everything is under the slur. Uh, make sure you watch out for those few little short notes that have a staccato dot on them. Uh, we want to go for very, very long phrases. This, a this etude might be difficult for the breathing, um, and I'll show you a couple ways you can even make it uh, more difficult for the breathing. And it's, it's very dynamic. There are a lot of um, dynamic changes. Most of them are gradual, gradual changes. I don't see any subito dynamics in this excerpt. We'll have questions after I play through it and after I talk about it a little bit. So um, I guess I'll just go ahead and play it. I'll just check my tempo, which is quarter note equals 52. Just checking my tempo because there's a there's a melod there's a melodic etude for middle school and nine ten and eleven twelve and they're all very very similar, but they go at slightly different speeds. So I'm afraid I'm going to end up playing them all exactly the same if I don't check my metronome. This one is the slowest one. When I start my etude, this is great advice for anyone taking an audition. When I start an etude, I definitely, in my mind, while I'm preparing my first note and getting my very first very good breath from down low in the diaphragm, I'm definitely counting at least one full measure in that tempo. So in my mind, while I'm getting my breath, I am counting one and two and three and four and one. Another thing I like to do, this is good advice for practicing an etude, especially a lyrical etude, is once you know what key you're in, to make sure you're playing in tune, 
We all know that the flute loves to play a little flat when we're soft and a little sharp when we're loud. Um, and sometimes flat when we're very low and sometimes sharp when we're very high. Um, so of course I've got my metronome and my tuner handy. Um, and I'm sure we all, everyone here who signed up, I bet you has a tuner and works with a tuner. And your tuner might have the lights telling you if you're flat or sharp. The tuner might have the dial. Mine has, mine has both. It's digital, but it has both there. And I love this little machine, actually, a, a Korg TM 40 or 50 or 60. This is a 50. They're all the same um, because you can have a tuner and a metronome and you can actually have them both on at the same time. Um, in addition to just checking my notes, because I think it's pretty easy for um, any good students looking at the tuner to make the light go green or the dial move in the middle. You know, we can roll in, roll out, look up, look down, support, less support and get that, that light in the middle to get our note exactly in tune. But of course we want to be able to hear a green light because when we're playing in the concert, we don't get to look at the light or the dial. So what I really like to do to prepare and make sure I'm in tune is I use a, a drone. And by a drone, I mean um, a machine that sounds a constant pitch, um, not a drone, one of those fancy flying machines that takes pictures. Um, so because this etude is in D minor, it might be a great idea to drone. I have my fancy Dr. Beat, but you can find apps. There are apps that a good tuner app will definitely play the notes for you, not just tune the notes for you. Um, so here's a nice high D and I'll play the excerpt. I'll play a little bit of the excerpt again. So I'm hearing all my notes against the D because I'm playing in D minor. to be flat on my long, long F natural as it diminuendos. I'm trying not to be too sharp on my first loud note. Definitely trying not to be too flat on my last D natural as I hold it as long as I can because of the fermata and let that diminu diminuendo go absolutely down to nothing. The other drone, it's always fun to try in every key, is the fifth. So the fifth of D minor, of course, is A. I know you all know your D major chord for all state, D, F sharp, A. Same with D minor, D, F, A. Um, in D minor, the F is natural, but anyway. So I like to, to also try the A to with an A droning, and, and you can see that A is the first note in the A to so it's very nice to hear that against the machine that's always in tune. time 709 I should probably go to the second excerpt and make sure we have time left over at the end for some questions so if you have questions for the first a to jot it down make sure you don't forget you will be able to ask your question the second a to the technical a to allegro leggero of course if you ever see a word in Italian or French in, or in German on your music make sure you look it up first thing and know what it means. My French is really good. My Italian is pretty good. My German is terrible. I always have to look up every German word. So anyway, leggero, lightly. You might think of lightly as um, fun, happy, maybe short. I like to think of light, lightly in terms of not heavy, but also light, meaning very bright and not dark. So I'm, I'm not surprised to see a lot of staccato notes in this etude. And when I see a lot of staccatos, I think of those as detached so that the sunshine can shine through the notes. And that's what makes it bright and light and happy. We are in E flat major. 
This is a very bouncy etude. I see some accents. I might play a few more accents than are printed, especially on beat one in every measure. Of course, six, eight time quickly in two. One, two, one, two. One is always stronger than two. So I might actually accent a little bit on beat one, especially in these places where beat one is two slur, one tongue. Follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> That's my 6-8 song. Uh, what else? What else did I want to say about this? Um, this etude is, is at a speed where you could single tongue it or you could double tongue it. I'm kind of a double tonguing addict. Not every middle school student maybe double tongues yet. But you can single tongue it. Dia da 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 da. Or you could uh, do a triple tongue, double tongue pattern. Dia ga da ga da, dia ga da ga da da. Did you catch that? You can just nod if you caught that. Dia ga da ga da, dia ga da ga da ga. <laughs> anyway, you can talk to your private teachers about double tongue versus single tongue in this excerpt. If you are really going 128, speaking of 128, my metronome doesn't have 128 on it. My metronome is old school, and I have 126, and then I have 132. 126 is a little closer to 128 than 132. What else do I want to say about this one? E-flat major, happy, bouncy. I think that's all I wanted to say. A lot of articulation. You want to play this excerpt with this etude, sorry if I say excerpt, this is an etude. I'm used to talking about orchestral excerpts because I'm in the Atlanta Symphony. This etude is, is very, very articulated. It's a complete opposite of the first etude. So you wanna play this with a very pointed tongue with a lot of bite on the front edge of your notes. I will listen to my tempo. And I'll play through it for you. E flat. It's hard not to make that note sharp. Really aim down on your last loudest E flat and certainly every high loud E flat. That is the sharpest note on my flute, in fact. Oh, Karen's back. Are we running out of time? 714. We're good. We're doing great. Sorry, I saw Karen got worried that I was out of time. <laughs> so we've got plenty of time. Um, in this excerpt, a little advanced tip that I like, whenever I see um, time signatures like 6-8 or 4-4 four, four, or um, even 2-4, 12-8, 3-4, I always like to try it in a bigger beat pattern. So what do I mean by that? Well, 6-8, if it's really slow, can be in six slow beats for six eighth notes. Of course, in a fast piece like this one, uh, a conductor would be conducting in two, two groups of three, which is why it says dotted quarter equals 128. Um, three eighth notes equals a dotted quarter. And I like to try it in one. So to try it in one, I have to divide my 128 by two, because if you have 128 dotted quarters, that is 64 dotted half notes. My metronome has 63 or 66. I'll put it on 63. So then I don't have to feel bang, 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 bang. One, two, one, two. It helps me make beat one more important than beat two as well. Again, I'm gonna breathe for at least one full measure. These measures are so quick and so short. I bet you I would breathe for one, two, one, two. Two measures. 
before I start my audition. So, in my brain, one, two. the second etude played in one. I think now we've got lots of time for questions. All right, there's no questions yet, but I had one for you. All I was right, wondering, pleasure. I was wondering, um, so on these, especially because there's so many flutes who try out for Allstate, where are a few places that the flutes can really shine and kind of stick out from the pack? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Great question. So it's definitely in the musical details. So the easy part is learning the notes, learning the rhythm, playing through with your metronome. Yes, I'm with the metronome. Playing through with your tuner. Yes, I'm in tune. But then we have to really go for the musical markings. We have to really look for the phrases, your musical sentences. In the first etude, I think it's clearly a two-measure phrase. Um, and I would want to breathe with that phrase. And I think I said earlier I would show you a place where I actually make the breathing even more difficult than it needs to be. Because you can see the, the first phrase um, starting in measure one and going to the first half of measure two. You can think of those 16th notes as pickups into the second phrase. So even though there's a little eighth note rest there in the middle, if I feel like I'm getting a really good breath, I don't breathe there. I know it's very tempting. <laughs> Whenever there's a rest, it's very tempting to breathe. But I like to just kind of keep playing that phrase so I'm making a longer line. And you never know, if I'm the only person at the audition who does that really well, I might get a little bonus point. And we all know that at Allstate, one little bonus point makes a big difference. Because there's a lot of people who play, you know, play it correct, you know, correct, with the correct notes, the correct rhythm, correct articulation. So um, I'll just demonstrate that breath. So the first phrase. Etude, I really don't like the comma that they printed. In this second stanza, um, the I don't know why there's a little double bar after the F that I just played, but measure seven and then measure eight, there's that little comma between the C sharps. And I'll tell you why I really don't like it. Because on the first C sharp, they mark it tenuto. And tenuto means full value. And it might even mean give it a little extra something something like maybe you vibrate a little more or you press the note like you like your favorite pet and you just like pet it a little extra hard because they're your favorite <laughs> like, like you just give that and if you're doing all that to that note how do you make a big space to breathe so for me i i mean and i don't know how gma would feel gmea would feel about it I don't know if Karen can find out the answer from an expert that we might know, but I don't know how they would feel about it. But for me, I really, I wait to breathe on the bar, on the measure line before the piano low G that, that is short. So um, I try to do this. Um, I'll start in uh, measure seven and I'll show you what I mean. Well, first I'll show you what I mean in measure eight, how I really don't like the comma. I hate that big space. I really don't like it. I really want to hear it like. It's, 
it's so much it's just so much more um, connected and I, I really think we want to finish the two measure phrase which I think ends at the bar line you notice measure seven starts a phrase with the low short staccato note so I think the next phrase also starts on a low short staccato note and the most important rule of breathing is to breathe between the phrases whenever possible of course sometimes we breathe in rest because we have to survive of course, sometimes we breathe after a long note because we have to survive. We're woodwinds. We need our air to, to live and breathe. But, but musically, you know, a violinist, a cellist, a pianist, they're not gonna, they're not gonna breathe in between those two C sharps. It's a little bit crazy. I'll start at measure seven. <laughs> So that's where I like to breathe. I don't know how the judges at GMEA would think about that. I don't know if they would take a point off my score, but that's the way I like it. If you're going to breathe in between those C sharps, um, make sure you play that first C sharp as long and as beautiful as you can before you take your quick little breath. Other musical markings. Um, let's see. Um, to new those in measure in measure 10 so don't be afraid to play those notes with the tenuto a little bit out of time i wouldn't be afraid of slowing down even a little before the retardando is printed i mean that's a technicality but i i don't i don't think if i were playing this in a concert i don't think i would play the first two beats exactly the same speed i'm sure i would probably play the second beat a little slower than the first beat and the third beat a little slower still Try to, I, I do breathe before this long note because I want to play it really long because you're slowing down so your count is getting slower and slower so that D natural is a four count at your very slowest speed and then there's a fermata <laughs> so you play that note as long as you as long as you can control your tone and <laughs> and keep holding your flute up even when the note has disappeared <laughs> pretend it's still wait for it to stop ringing in the room um, in the second excerpt uh, musical markings um, I actually had to look up Karen I had to look up the proper name for you know in music we always call them the carrots when we're in orchestra I've never heard anybody use the technical term for the carrots which is the little you know the little uh, accent that's up like this and I think we call them carrots because, you know, they don't really look like carrots, do they? But I think it's from a French word, C-A-R-E-T, carré. So it's like carrot. And, and some people might even call it, um, which is a bit, I love this name. I'm going to call it this from now on, le petit chapeau, which is a little hat. <laughs> so I think that looks like a little hat a lot more than a carrot. And um, it might mean to be just a little stronger and heavier than your normal accent. So um, normally in music, I would never tell anyone, you know, to play the last note of a phrase with an accent. But when you see these little hats, the petit chapeau or carrots, whatever you want to call them, you can really punch them hard. To me, it's it. I don't like it, but that's what's on the page. So, you know, that's my job and I have to do what's on the page. <laughs> um, musically, what else? Um, I think musically having a great pulse. I know you can all follow your metronomes and play the right rhythm and play the right speed, but pulse, you know, pulse, I actually said this to one of my um, Kennesaw State University students this morning, and I said, so what would happen to a, what would, what state would a musician be in if they had no pulse? And she just kind of looked at me very, and I said, she would be dead. <laughs> You know, you have to have a pulse to live, right? Like humans have to have a pulse. So this music really needs a pulse to live. It's and just to be alive and to be vibrant. And so it's not enough to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It needs to be one, two, three, 
four. One, two. That, that's the pulse, you know, the ebb and the flow. The str I always say strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. Six, eight time. Strong and a weak and a strong and a weak and a strong. One, one, one. For my four, four, if it were a fast excerpt, I would play it in two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. My Mozart, everybody knows Mozart. It's in 4-4. Four, four. I can't stand it when I hear Mozart. It's it's so, ugh. Sounds like the person's riding a pogo stick while they play. One, two, one, two. It just has more flow and yumminess. <laughs> Any other questions? That, that was the best question to ask. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Doesn't look like any others popped up, but thank you, Mr. Skitch, for your valuable insight. I know I learned a lot and hopefully our middle school flute players did too. And good luck to everyone on your upcoming audition. I think this week you're going to learn a lot more about how to make the recordings for this as we have it. It's a little bit different on how they're doing the auditions this year. Um, look out for more communication from Z-Tunes on lessons and upcoming clinics for Allstate and more. And have a great week, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Skitch. Good luck.